Good day, folks. This is Jay from JTAR. And of course, we've got our great co host, Nick from the Nick Drop. <laughs> Why do you come up with this stuff, man? I can't even. I mean, you start talking right off the bat, I'm losing it. Why? I'm like, I'm so freaking out even touching the buttons. Why? It's funny. It's just funny. That's it's just a saying. just a different different voice. I mean, it's no big deal, man. Come on. <laughs> I know it doesn't sound like me, does it? Ladies and gentlemen, Jay on center stage. <laughs> yeah, there you go. See, you can do it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hibachi. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. So how you doing, man? Man, it was a good day. It really was. I, you know. The tough part about all this stuff, you know, selling my property up there and all that, you know, I got all this stuff in my apartment and all this stuff in my garage and I'm trying to plan this weekend. All right, I'm going to get motivated. I'm going to get it all cleaned up this weekend, even though it's hot, you know. Right. And I got a buddy coming over. He's got all his tools in my garage, Mike, and he's got to redo some brakes. So him and I are going to get up, you know, with cracking on Saturday morning and we're going to try to knock that out while he's doing that. He's going to be going, throw that away, because he's got a lot of stuff in my garage, too. Oh, so, okay. So that's the big the big motivator for this weekend, to get back to a square one, because my house is a mess, and garage is a mess. You know, like both of my trucks are a mess, you know, work truck, and so I need to start cleaning and, and throwing stuff away, because I've got too much stuff. Decluttering? Yeah. Decluttering, yeah, that's that. That's what I was trying to think of the word. I couldn't think of it. Yeah, 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 I need to declutter. I'm a minimalist. I don't even know why I have this much stuff because I have everything in Bandera. Now all of it's here. Yeah. So now I'm like, okay, this is you know, I got three or four container bins that you and I had talked about several times, full of stuff. Right. Full of dry shelf food and in that kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah. I got two coffee makers. I've got, you know, that kind of stuff. And I don't need two coffee makers. It drives me crazy. I don't need all that. Right. So yeah. how about you, brother? How was your day at work? Um, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Yeah. You know, I didn't sleep well last night. I don't know. You know, wound up. Happened. A great birthday dinner. Oh yeah. No, 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 no. And and yeah, that that was yesterday was a good day. Don't get me wrong. And just sometimes you just have those nights where you just can't sleep. Yeah, true. You, you know, put the TV on and, and toss and turn and toss and turn. Uh, well, I don't have a TV in my bedroom, so. Oh, shame it, on you. Yeah, it was just a toss and turn and toss and turn. <laughs> that has been one of the biggest conversations of women that I've dated over the years. That they won't put a uh, TV in their kids' room, and they will put a TV in their kids' room. You know that kind of thing. Right. And I don't, I don't know whether it's right or wrong, or in you know I'm indifferent with the either way. You know, because right. we always had. Computers, the kids had computers and TVs and Xboxes and PlayStations and all that in their room. Yes. You know, because we wanted them to go to their room and close the door and, you know. Leave us alone. Dinner. I'm just kidding. Yeah, we, we, we had dinner together. We all had our conversations. We talked about our day. Now it's time for all of us to split up. You know, yeah, exactly. Show, whatever. Yeah. Well, and, you know, it's funny because it's not too different from our childhood with the exception of. Instead of sending them outside, we're sending them, you know, to their room, to their room where the electronics are. Now, granted, for me, all Gabe's electronics are in my room. Huh. And so I manage his access. Oh, well, that's smart. You know, and I, some people will agree. Some people will disagree. I really don't care. Right. But um, for me, I think the big important thing is, is. I read something a while back, and it really made sense to me. And it said, if you get in bed and all you do is play on your phone or you watch TV, when you go to get in bed to go to sleep, your body thinks you're there to watch TV. It's not. Right. And so it will make it to where you struggle going to sleep. So for my kids, you know, it's like, dude, when you get in bed, you're going to bed. There's there's no electronics. There's no nothing. Just unplug from when you go get in your room, you know. 
That's it. See, yeah. and I think that's really smart because my kids, because of the way their mother and I were, you know, we, her and I would sit down and agree, okay, at a certain part of time, they need to turn off all the electronics and do whatever, read a book 30, 45 minutes before they lay down because they get wound up. Yeah. Especially if they're playing and they're doing all this with an Xbox or a PlayStation, you know, they're wound up. Yes. So they can't go to sleep. Well, we would agree, all right, we're going to cut them off. If they go to bed at 9 o'clock, we're going to cut them off at 8.30. Right. Well, after a while, she would go behind my back and let them have it, and then I'd wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, and I would hear the Xbox playing on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Oh, yeah. No. It literally stayed up all night long. Yeah. In the middle of the week, and, you know, and then the, they were sleeping in class, and then they got in trouble, and, you know. Right. And I'm like, why, why did, why did you give them that? But it's just easier for me if I, you know, because they complain. And I'm like, you're the boss, not, you know. Yeah, I know. We made it. We made. We structured. Yeah. Do it. You know, and that's why my kids are so crazy, is because her and I never saw eye to eye on on how to discipline and structure our kids. Well, and if you did see eye to eye, it was was a facade. It was almost like she was like, okay, you know, she played the eye to eye in front of right. you, but then behind but then your back. To be the best friend behind the back. Our, our best friends was another couple, and they have three boys. And them boys are well-behaved, well-organized, not crazy, no drugs, no drinking, you know, and home in bed by 9 o'clock, even when they were in high school. Right. And she said, how come our kids can't be like that? And I'm like, oh, don't you dare get me started. <laughs> don't you dare get me started. I, and know. I, I can't blame it all on her. You know, it was know. both. Yeah. But we just never could come to an agreement like they did. Right. They really, they knew at the end of the day, those two were united front no matter what. Right. No matter what. That's good. And their, it, and, and their kids showed it, you know. Right. Well, and you know the pro the the advantage there is, you know, when both parents are united, both parents enforce the rules instead of like one parent being the bad guy. Right. It, I was always the bad guy. Yeah, it really makes it tough. So, yeah. So anyway, but yeah. So I no, don't yeah. Hand that one, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, but yeah, so that's why that's why Gabe, all Gabe's electronics are in my room because you know what? He wants to play his computer. He's got to come to my room. He ain't doing that in the middle of the night because he don't want to have to wake Dad up. <laughs> that's smart. Very smart. You know? Because if, if it's in the living room, he might, if he can't sleep, he'll go, you know. Yeah, he'll go try to sneak. But the, the, the advantage of the living room, I have a camera in the living room, and it dings every time there's movement in the living room. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, I see. We didn't have that 30 years ago. No, man. we didn't. We didn't. And I built out a room, a computer room in the garage. So oh. the kids would sneak past our bedroom door. Right. And go sit in there. Once they close the door, you know, you can't. That was hear it. I know. You can't hear anything. So, so. no, I understand. My, it's my poor kids. Yeah. They had no structure and discipline. They're idiots. No, I'm not. They're not idiots. I'm kidding. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> They're not. I love my. I love my boys. They're, <laughs> they. Um, they may have lacked some structure and common sense at times, but they weren't stupid. Right, you are absolutely right. You know, they. You no, know, they went off. You know, a couple of them went off the rails, but not too far off the rails. Right. I mean, you know, I'm not visiting any of my kids in prison, so you know. <laughs> and one of them is on the what? The Nimitz. He's on the Nimitz right now in the Navy. Yeah, see, there, dude. There's nothing to be nothing wrong with that at all. Not at all. You know, so yeah. you know, it's people make mistakes when they're kids. Their peer pressure, their whatever. There's so many things. I mean, come on, we know. And today's Nick's birthday. Oh, He's good. on the Nimitz. Nimitz's birthday. Yeah. All right. He turns 22. Oh, good. Cool. Good for him. Yeah. Yep. So, anyway, so, uh, yeah. 
today uh so for yeah so nick's birthday is today um nikki yeah nikki, nikki's, birthday today. Nick, yeah. nikki's birthday sorry not nick yeah. the co-host but nikki uh, yeah yeah mine's again. nikki from the nick drop no i'm just kidding no way <laughs> oh no no, no. nikki no, no that no. was back when i was in high school no more nikki no more nikki okay yeah that's funny anyway <laughs> But no, it, it's that's kind of cool. But yeah, no, it's uh, part of what we were going to talk about today is is birthdays, and it's funny that Nikki's birthday is today. Right. Of course, mine was yesterday. Junior's the day before. It's um, you know, we were talking about this at dinner. It's like we have like seven birthdays in the month of June. You know, three with immediate family, and then. Extended family four actually if you count my grandkids but yeah and then you got you know together so what does that mean is it september october september i guess when it starts getting cold everybody starts october it, yeah right yeah 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 i guess i guess i was the early bird special <laughs> <laughs> So you, I was born in January. My you, sister, you know, my family, July's their month. Oh, really? You know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got five or six of them in July. Wow, that's pretty crazy. Dad, mom, sister, you know, you know. Yeah, all that craziness. Yeah. So it's uncle. Yeah, cousin. yeah, yeah. So, um, did you call him, or can you call him? I can't call him, but I texted him. I don't know if he's getting them or not. I don't okay. know what the rules are. Um. We did. We all got together and sent cards. Yeah. So my mother sent those out. I don't, you know, like I said, we, we won't know if he got them. He never responded to my text messages. But even still, whenever he does get to a point where he can look at his phone, he'll know. Yeah. And I sent it to him on his birthday. And, you know, my sister did. My brother did. Everybody did. Good. So Good. I don't know what the ruling is on that. But I do know that I'm on a Facebook group all about the USS Nimitz. So you see pictures and people talking about stuff, right. but not on the boat. They're the family of the people that are on the boat. Right. And there's 32 to 3,500 people on that boat at any given time. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty insane. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I got to tell you, it was an interesting weekend for me. So funny thing is, is, I end up spending more money than I wanted to. Um, my son wanted to do axe throwing for his birthday. Right. Turned 25 this year. Wanted him and his friends to go axe. $35 a person to go axe throwing. Okay. Okay. And you may you may get like an hour or an hour and a half. I don't remember what it was of axe throwing for... Okay. Oh. Hold on a second. He just wanted to say hi to everybody. He's good. The tail's just as wagging. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, so we got, um, you know, you think about that. Even at 35, you know, 30 bucks a person, he had four friends over plus himself. And that's 150 bucks right, right there. And that's nobody else. Right. You know. So uh, we, uh, it was, oof, everybody could pay for their self, but not everybody can afford it. And then what do you got to do? Dinner, you know, all that fun stuff. So Saturday, I got up and I actually built this axe throwing board. Now, Nick's seen wall. it. Yeah. It's a wall. It's yeah. not a board. It's a wall. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. A, a wall yeah. for a range, yeah. for an axe throwing range. Well, we end up choosing the wrong wood. I should have did a little more research to it, but I had leftover wood, so we used it. We right. just bought a little more. But yeah, so we built this wall, and so we used um, ten foot posts. So we had to dig two and a half feet down in the ground with, some dude, and it was hot Saturday. I, I'll tell you, it was a scorcher. Oh. You know. <laughs> Every, For those of you who don't know, we're in Texas, and it was 100-plus degrees. It's been 100-plus degrees for like the last 10, 12 days. Yeah, I know. It's funny. Yeah. 
Yeah. Ridiculous. You go look at the memes on Facebook. It explains it all. You know, yep. somebody died, went to hell. And, you know, Satan's like, yeah, it's pretty hot down here. And everybody's just like, eh, ain't no bad. Go to Texas. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah go to Texas. <laughs> so, I mean, granted. It's not, it, it's not like Iraq when it's 130 there. It's a dry heat. Oh, yeah, I know, right? Here when it's 100 to 105 with 100% humidity. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yep. and we, you know, what was it? Uh, Abigail was the one that was talking about that because she's been to Iraq, right? And she said, "Oh my gosh, it's murder in Houston with the humidity." It's, it's, so it's crazy how that makes a difference. Yes, and we want to give a shout out to Abigail. So we talked to her earlier today. Yeah, we miss her. Yes, get her back on the show. But yeah, so you know that was interesting. But yeah, so you know, building this wall. For a axe throwing and converted to a knife throwing and Sharukan Ninja Star Kunai, all those different types of throwing blades. What the hell's a Sharukan? It's like a Ninja Star. Oh, okay. Or a different name for a Ninja Star. Oh, okay. And a Kunai is actually a I think it's Chinese or Japanese throwing blade. Um, knife. Yes, it's it's yeah. like a like a knife, but it's 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 a, it's shaped a little different. There are a lot of kids will know it really quickly because you know they use it on the the Naruto anime. So, oh right, yeah. So but, like, is the blade like straight on one side and it rounds coming back? And it's no, kind of curved. You know what I'm talking about? That's I know what, what you're talking about. No, this yeah. one's more of a triangle blade. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, you know, it kind of comes down, but at the handle, the handle comes down to a little thin piece, and then it's got a ring on it. Oh, okay. Okay, and so, yeah, it's just a little different. And some of them don't have the ring, but essentially it's just, uh, you know, ninjas or stuff like that. You know, they're the ones that use it. So um, it's real easy for them to handle, and it's not bulky. It's really small blade. Yeah. And so I have a set of. Three, it has a set of twelve. Wow, yeah, because I saw like six or eight knives in one of the pictures that you posted. Well, now that see, those were our throwing knives that we actually bought from Renfest. Oh, okay, okay. So those are actually designed for throwing knives, and we actually bought that as a set. So I think it was like twenty dollars for six knives. Yeah, it was like six knives. You know, right. So, you know, but yeah, the knives, they were great. The axes, because it was hardwood, they would never stick. Right. So, we're going to end up putting some soft wood up and make it a little bit better for the axes. They, they just had fun with the knives. I mean, oh, honest, yeah. it was really. And you got the, th I saw some pictures with the stars, the throwing stars and stuff. Oh, like yeah. That. Gabe, Gabe, of course, posed really. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it was That's pretty good funny. Stuff, yeah, I know it is. It is. He had fun, you know, and it's the beauty of it is it's a controlled environment. I could teach my kids. You know, we set up some range, we set up some distance lines, and you know, I could literally they would throw it and depending on how it hit the board, I could tell them you need to move forward, you need to move back, you know, how many inches. And they'd literally right. they'd start sticking it, you know. Nice. And so, That's cool. Yeah, it is. So I actually had one time where I threw all six blades, um, and I threw from the blade, not from the handle, and I stuck all six in one, one shot. Nice. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know how many times we threw that thing, but you know what I mean. It's when you get to a point. Practice. Yeah, exactly. And they were all within a foot and a half of each other in a diameter. Nice. So that's pretty insane. So, so, yeah. So if I'm 10 feet away from you, I either need to get closer or farther away. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 We'll go with that. But see, here's the flip side. At 10, if you're 10 feet away and I hit you with the handle, all I'm going to do is flip around and change what I'm throwing it from. Right. Because if I hit you with the handle and I'm throwing from the blade, I just switch to the handle and I'm going to hit you with the blade. That's true. By the Good second point. one, I'm probably going to 
you know. If I'm standing still, I'm coming at you. Yeah, but I, so, I've, got a, I've got a gun. Yeah, so, I know. Exactly. And I've shot at you like eight times and still missed you, and I was like 10 feet away. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> sure, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I'm telling you, man, you can go out and shoot and hit the target all day long at 10 feet, 5 feet, but when you're under pressure and somebody's coming at you for your life, you'd be surprised if you even hit them oh, really? with a full magazine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, you're so panicked. All over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's so my mother got smart. She bought the rat pellet bullets. Yes. For a thirty-eight, so yeah. it scatters that big, so not going to penetrate and kill you, but it sure is going to piss you off. So. <laughs> it's either going to piss you off or it's going to scare the crap out of you. You're going to be like, "What the hell just hit me?" Or and yeah. By the time that happened, she had two of those bullets, and the next one were hollow points. So oh yeah. That gave her two quick shots to have him go, "Oh my god!" And then boom. Yeah. You know, yeah. But, exactly. Luckily, she's never had to use it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Good for her. But I'm never sneaking in her house in the middle of the night without her waking up. I'm going to tell her, hey, I'm fixing to walk in the front door. Mom. Now she had a gun. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you definitely don't want to mess with that. I bought oh. a kid's a little 20 gauge, a little for kids to learn yeah. how to shoot, skeet and stuff. She's got it now. Nice. And it's loaded in her bedroom. Oh, yeah. No, don't want to mess with that. Yeah, you don't just don't mess with my mother, period. Yeah, I know. Shotguns and pistols and golf clubs. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna be in trouble you sneak in her house. I know, right? It's almost as bad as my house. Yeah, oh yeah. Swords and axes and sewing knives and yeah, exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> that next thing you know, they're pinned up against the wall like this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they're not going to be pinned up against the wall unless one of them went straight through them. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> I know, man. But no, it, other than that, yeah, so we threw a lot of, you know, he had his friends over. We had a great birthday party, and, you know, um, I do want to make this comment because it really, a lot of people are really anti-birthday or anti-birthdays, period. Yeah, when we get older, we're like, you know, that's just another day. I know. And and I understand that, but there are some people that hate their birthday. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and look, if there was a traumatic event that happened on your birthday, I understand. Okay? Right. It's rough. It's hard or whatever. But if the only reason that you hate your birthday is because you're a year older, um... Celebrate the fact that you're still standing. Yes. Nick Nick knew where I was going because yeah. I, I have a son who will no longer get to celebrate a birthday ever again. Right. You know, and so that has been one of those things that I try to tell people. It's just, you know, I had a friend, it was funny, I had a friend tell me, yeah, I hate my birthday. And I'm like, really, why? And I just... You know, it's just another day. It's no big deal. And I'm like, okay. And I said, is there a reason why you hate your birthday? No, I just, you know, it's just another. I, and I just kind of looked at him. And I'm like, is it because you're getting older? And I'm like, right. You know, I looked at him and I said, okay, I'm going to be the bad guy. And they kind of looked at me and I said, at least you get another birthday. And that look of complete, you know, embarrassment, I guess, is the what I would call it. Well, hell yeah, I'd be embarrassed as hell because you don't think of that, you know, you don't think of the, you're just sitting there whining about it, you know, maybe just to whine or, you know, whatever. Right, right. And you don't realize. Right, exactly. And so she kind of had this look and she's like, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> you know, and so it, yeah. but it, you know, I, life is precious. And if you get to celebrate another birthday, that means you get another year of life. You get to enjoy another year with your kids, another year with your family, another year with your friends. I mean, 
I know people are just, it's really hard. And it, and it, some of it's mental health, some of it's trauma, some of it's whatever, you know, if they broke up with somebody on that day or if, you know, they they had a divorce that was near a birthday, right. you know, I know someone whose father, you know, died two days before or two days after their birthday. So it's a really hard day. Right. You know, and that's a little different. You know, you can understand that. That's that would be challenging for anyone, but that's not because they're not thankful they're still alive. It's because of the the event that's associated. No different than me and Valentine's Day. You know, yeah. two days after my son took his life, it's a traumatic month for me. It's gonna be hard for me, period. Right. So you know, I think that's that's kind of what I, you know, yesterday I thought about this. We had dinner, you know, me and my family, and we had a great time, and Nick was there, and it was funny as hell, and, you know, of course, uh, if you're ever at the Papacitas, I-10, near Federal Road on the east side, um, ask for Brianna, you know, she's... He- yeah, she took care of us. Yeah, she's an insane floor manager, so she's really good. Um, if you have a problem and she's not, she's there. Just let her know. Yeah, you know. So, but yeah, she really did. She did take care of us. But I, I it was a lot of fun. But you know, as I'm sitting there thinking about it, you know, I, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm 51, and I'm happy I'm 50. You know. Because I get to live and I get to celebrate and live a life that my son doesn't. And I am going to do my best. And granted, I probably don't live my life like other people think I should. But by the same token, I haven't given up. You know? Well, everybody think you know, everybody's got an opinion about, you know, should, could have, would have, or if this, or why aren't you doing that? You know, everybody has their focus in life. Yes. You know? Right. You got people, they always talk about people that have addictions, right? Yeah. yeah. But when you say the word addiction, it also, it automatically has a negative connotation. Yeah. But people that have addictive personalities are also world-class bodybuilders, world-class triathlons. Oh, world yeah. Class, you know, so the bad part of addiction, if they're on drugs and doing stuff like that, alcohol, that that's the bad part of it. Yes. But the people that have those personalities are also world-class athletes. Yeah. At some, you know, yeah. it's the same thought process in their head they're just doing it in a positive way instead of a negative way. Yes, they're completely no, motivated, completely, yes, driven towards, you know, their addiction for working out, their addiction, their competitive nature. Yes. It's, it's all, a, an, you know, that elation, that whatever, that feeling, the adrenaline rush when you win. I mean, that's, it's an addiction. Yeah. yeah. Any, any alcoholic or drug addict I've ever seen, when they turn their life around, they become pastors or preachers or bodybuilders or world-class water skiers. I mean, these these people that grew up in a rough house in a rough neighborhood or whatever. Right. And, you know, they had some run-ins, and they turned it around and made it positive. Right. But it's all the same principle. Right. So, you know, it's it's how you want to deal with it. Right. Right. And so they just took their passion and redirected it to bad and redirected it to good. Right. Yeah. And that's really good for those folks. I mean, and that's the challenge, though, is showing people that there is good out there that you can apply those nature, I guess. Yes. You know, and so that's the challenge for people. Yep. So, but no, I just, you know, I, I was very happy. I wanted to share my two cents about, you know, kind of birthdays and you know, it's it's important for people. I and mean, we talk about mental health all the time. It's important for people to to think about that. Um, there's always somebody out there 
that loves you. You may not know it. There's somebody out there that loves you, and they want to see you have another birth. Right. You know? And, and you even may not understand it. Yeah, even if they don't know how to communicate that. Yes. They're still there. Yeah. Yeah. Because there are a lot of people in this world that, that have a struggle time communicating things, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. just a given. That's that, There's a lot of people that are, you know, have an insane. I mean, and, and, you know, we talk about the generation we're in now where people are using text messages on their phones, and it's made it hard for them to be sociable in person. There are, right. there are a lot of people, they'll get together, and they'll literally communicate through their phone and not even talk. It re, you know, I've seen people sit in the same room and text each other. Right. Yeah. And I'm just so, like... I remember back in the day... I, you know, before I got married and had kids and all that stuff, I dated a lady, and her way of communication was writing, handwriting letters. Oh. She couldn't verbally communicate her her thought process or her feelings or emotions. Right. She had to write it down. Right. So on a daily, I would get, you know, a letter, and I'd read it, and then I'd sit down and tell her my feelings, and then she'd go away and think about it, write it down, and, you know, we did that back and forth, and it was a good way to communicate. It was a little frustrating because of the time frame. Yes. You know, to sit down and have to write something out, and then for me to read it, and it's in cursive, it's, that was a little struggle for me, too, you know. That, yeah. So those little, those little struggles, you know, it, it was a way to communicate, but it was a little frustrating. But you had to do it, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Something you t- just said spurred a random thought. I'm going to get off subject. Okay. Okay. I saw this really funny joke slash meme today. Okay. Guy goes into the auto mechanic. And he says, hey, every time I put my car in drive, it stalls. Okay. Okay. So... Auto mechanic takes the car out, drives it around. It works fine. Didn't stall once. <laughs> so he's like, calls the guy back. He said, hey, I need you to come up. I, I've already diagnosed, looked at the problem. I think I know what your issue is. It shows a picture. What do you think the picture is? Uh, I, I, I'm clueless. I really am. First, second, third, fourth, drive, reverse. Okay. So D- this is a stick shift. It's a stick shift. <laughs> okay, I just got it. <laughs> so for all you folks out there who don't get this, he was putting it in drive, which is technically fifth gear. And on a stick, you ain't going nowhere in fifth gear. You're not, in the, not sitting still going. No, right. exactly. So that's what this guy was doing. He was, he was putting it in drive, popping the clutch, and of course it stalls. <laughs> Sorry, I had to share that. Oh, that's good. One. That makes perfect sense. Yes. Yeah, so, but, you know, it's funny because the only reason I bring that up is because there's jokes going around. That if we, uh, what is it, if we wrote in cursive, we drove stick, something else, we would totally, like, you know, this generation would be lost. They, didn't, they wouldn't know what to do. Right. Just like the rotary phone. Yeah. People didn't know what that was. You yeah. Know, even kids nowadays. Yes. Yeah. So. Pushing on the bay, that's pretty funny, some of those <laughs> things you see on TikTok about that. So. But that made me think of one I dated this lady, love her to death, and we have talked on and on since we stopped seeing each other. It's been years. Yeah. And I remember one time, and this was a while ago. I don't know why it made me remember it, but she said, yeah, the reason that we didn't make our relationship was because of this, this, and this, and this kind of, and I was like, what? 
Now, and it all made sense to me, and it all made sense that, yes, that's probably the way I would have done things, but I had no idea that that's the way she felt about the things that I was doing in the order that I was doing them in. Okay. Because of our lack of communication. Right. You know. Oh, so you were stalling later. because you were trying to go in fifth gear. At yeah, least yeah. she thought she thought you were, but you were actually putting it in first in your yeah. mind. Or vi- yeah. 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 So it's really interesting how we can't articulate things as much anymore. That's why divorces are disposable these days. Yeah. Yeah, let's get married because it's all exciting and fun and then Two years later, you ain't no fun no more, so we're getting a divorce. Right. You know, that kind of stuff. It just, you know, nobody makes forth an effort. Online dating, I don't know how many times you and I have talked about that, but it is so difficult. And everybody knows the rules. Yes. But they don't fix, you know, they don't fix it. Right. You know. Right. We don't, and and I'm not pointing the finger at anybody else because I'm just as guilty. Right. Right. I don't understand it. Yeah, and this is another birthday. I'm single. Thanks for reminding me. Amen, brother. <laughs> and I got you by a few years, so. You know. I know, I know. But, you know, I'll be honest with you. I'm still glad I had another birthday. Single or not, I'm still glad. Yes. You know, and I'll be honest with you. I would rather be single than be with someone that had drama on my birthday. Because that could be worse. Absolutely correct. (laughs) Absolutely correct. You know, so you kind of still look at the positive side of things. So it could have been. (laughs) That's the one good thing about marriage. When I was married, we communicated that well. On Mother's Day, yeah, she it was her day. No matter what she wanted me and the boys to do, that's what we did. Yeah, good. Whether it was cutting the grass, washing the car, doing the laundry, cooking dinner, anything she wanted. Right. So we'd have the younger ones catering to her if she wanted an iced tea while she was watching her show in the middle of the day. Right. The young ones would go get her an iced tea while the older ones and me were out cutting the grass or washing the car, you know, running errands, going to the grocery store, whatever. Right. So that was her day. Right. And then Father's Day was supposed to be my day, but it was her day. I don't know how that worked out. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, I had my day. She, re- they, they really did good, you know. But as us men, we don't ask for very much, you know. I'm like, all right, you guys aren't getting out, and cutting the grass, and washing the cars. That's not what you're doing, right? You know, for the for the wife, for me, for Father's Day, I want my favorite meal, right? You know, which might entail a little bit more cooking and maybe a little dessert cooking and that kind of thing, cooking. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, that's what we would do. And we tried to do that on birthdays, and most of the time it really worked out. But, you know, that was always re- really cool about the marriage part because you'd communicate that. Okay, Mother's Day, whatever your, whatever your heart desires. Right. You want to leave me and the boys at the house and you go hang out with your girlfriends all day? That's what you do. And while you're out hanging out with your girlfriends and shopping and having fun, what are we supposed to be doing here, you know? And it was always great. Right. It all it always worked out really well. We did that pretty good. See, and the funny thing is, Mother's Day, we always get together with my mom. And Father's Day, we always get together with my dad. Ooh, I got a good story about that. Uh, oh, 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 okay, okay. Okay. So Mother's Day for my mother, she likes to play golf. Nobody's on the golf course on Mother's Day because all the guys that golf, where are they? With their moms or wives. That's right. Yes. Well, I'm out on the golf course, and my brother's out on his golf course, and my sister's on the golf course with mom, and all of our significant others, where are they? At home. Ooh. Yeah, that didn't go over so well the first time. Okay. So, you know. Yeah. How do you juggle that? Well. It's my mother's Mother's Day, but my wife is also a mother. Okay, so there is there is compromise. Yes. That is the key point. People need to understand that. You know That's a tough that was a tough one for me. It worked itself out in over the years. Right. But the first time it was like, it's my day too. And I understood where she was coming from, my wife, at right. the time. Right. You know, that's a fair thing. And 
I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place because I like to make everybody happy, but it just doesn't seem, you know. Right. That was that first time was a tough one. See, and for me, I think that was never an issue because you know it's sort of like okay, um, I'll use my sister as an example. Her and David. David's been on the show. You guys know, but yeah. what will happen is they will come and have lunch or dinner, you know, lunch with my mom and they'll spend two hours there and then they'll turn around and they'll go to his mom and then, right. and then they'll turn around and they'll go out. So, but your sister has kids too, right? They have yeah. kids. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. she's a mom too. Yes. Yeah. So, but the point is, is there's this understanding is, is look, I want some time with my mom and you want some time with your mom, you know? So you could either do it one or two ways. I've actually had friends who what they'll do is they'll split up and they'll, well, the, the mom will go see her mom. The dad will go see his mom and they meet back together with the kids and they treat that mom. That's, that's a good way to do it. We used to do Christmases like that. Yeah. So the grandparents, Christmas Eve, grandparents, grandparents. And the next year it was dad's grandparents first, mom's grand, you know, yeah. mom's parents. And then the next year we'd flip it. Yeah. And then my mother got smart. She said, I'll tell you what, for Mother's Day for me, we're going to do it the weekend before. Good so for that her. you can spend time with your wife or her parents or whatever. Right. I get the weekend before. So it got to a point for years. My mother would do Thanksgiving the week before, Christmas the week before, birthdays the week before or after, depending on everybody's schedule. Right. You know. Right. And so it, that worked out fantastic. But see, that's, so it, that's compromise. Your mom was, yes. you know, trying to work with you guys so you would have time to spend with your wife. Right. And that was a beautiful thing. That was really smart on your my mother was extremely, she's like, we're going to fix this because I want you, I want my day. Yes. And she deserves and that. it's not fair to take the whole day because there are other mothers and, yeah. you know, all that stuff, for Thanksgiving, all of it. Yeah. So she said, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to celebrate Thanksgiving the Saturday before or Sunday before. Right. And then Christmas, we'll do Christmas. And it started to get jumbled because my brother's wife, her whole family's in Louisiana. Yeah. So we started doing that. So she goes down to Louisiana and she says, you're not going to believe what Sammy did. That woman is so smart. She's having all this the weekend before. So now her family went, that's a great idea. We're going to do that too. So now, I mean, it did. It, because we're such a big family and diverse and married force and all that, it's sad that we're like that. But Everybody seems to figure it out, work it out, you know, and my mom gets her day. That's the important thing for me. Yeah, no, it is. It and is. then the wife will go, hey, we'll do, I want my family here, and I want you to cook a turkey dinner the first weekend of December, which is after Thanksgiving. Right. Done. Yeah. You know, so, and it we did, we juggled that, and it worked out pretty good for the most part. You know, yeah. there were some struggles, but that's the way everything is. No, it is. It is. So. Yeah. Birthdays, we try to do our best to do it on the day. If on my mother's birthday, she loves to play golf. So if her birthday is on a Wednesday, we plan it this Saturday or Sunday before or after, you know. So good for you. Yeah, we always try to do the birthdays on the weekend before or after instead of during the middle of the week. And then if we get lucky, we might just have dinner with a quick family, you know, on a Tuesday night or something. Because like we did last night. Minutes away. Yeah, yeah. Brother's 45 minutes away, sister's 45 minutes the op direction. If we all meet in the middle, we're 45 minutes apart. We can at least do a quick dinner in the middle of the week. And then if that's it, that's it. If not, we'll plan something on the Saturdays. Exactly. And it's always at my house, right? Yeah, so, I mean, and that's funny because we always have a standing rule. And I'm the one that started this. It was really funny. Um, my parents have adopted it. But when we were up north... My standing rule was on your birthday, you could eat wherever you want. 
I'll take you to buy any any restaurant you want, whatever you want. It is your birthday. Tell us where you want to go, and that's where we're eating dinner. Ah. And so that was that was the standing rule. So when we come down, that when we were still living up north, we'd come down, and you know, if it was on somebody's birthday, it'd be like, "Hey, mom, dad, you want to join us? You know, the kids want to go here." And they were like, "Okay." And so literally, I'd my parents would come out, and I would buy, you know, dinner, and you know, whatever the kids wanted. That's that's where we ate. Well. Then my parents, you know, because I started inviting them, they were like, well, you know, why don't we buy? And it's like, you don't have to do this. And they were like, I know. But I think it's kind of cool. And so they started doing it. So they started doing it, all the kids. Nice. You know, so now I don't know if they do it. You know, I don't keep track of that. That's none of my business, what they do for the other kids. Right. But it's, it's really cool. That's a standing thing. You know, I take Gabe out for his birthday, and if my parents can join us, great. If they can't, I I understand. Well, wouldn't that be Gabe's choice? Hey, I want everybody here. No, and everybody step up. No, well, no, no, because essentially it's only immediate family and well, my yeah. parents, and that's it. So it's only three of us and my parents. He knows that. It's the, you know, and he understands that. Like he wanted to go to Rainforest Cafe. Well, Parents aren't going to drive all the way to the Galleria, and they closed the one in the Galleria now, so it's even worse. Uh, Galveston, where's the closest one? Katie Mills Mall or Galveston? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, Katie Mills Mall would be closer for you. Galveston would probably be closer for me. Yes, it would. Yeah, yeah. So. But now he's changed it. He doesn't go to uh, Rainforest anymore. He would go to Rainforest if it was closer. But after right. making that drive twice, he doesn't want to do it again. That lava cake is worth the drive. It is. Oh, yeah. Don't get me wrong. It is phenomenal, <laughs> but that is a long drive. For a kid yeah. who gets car sick, no. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. So, we don't do that anymore. But, you know, but, yeah, that's our standing rule. So, Gabe understands, depending on the restaurant he goes to, they may not make it because they don't want to leave far from the house either. Right. You know, so that's part of the reason why. Jay and I, we always go to the same place. It's a given. It's always Papacitos. It's whichever one. And since my parents are getting older, we do the Papacitos next to their house. It's easy right. on them. Oh, that piece of fish I had last night was amazing. Yeah, I know. It was so it's good. A the... mahi mahi with shrimp. Had shrimp on top of it and some grilled. Oh, it was so good. Yeah. Unfortunately, I can't afford to buy my favorite plastic. Anymore. See, shame on you. Why? I should have said something when I sat down that this one's on me. I I still wouldn't have bought it. Why? It's your birthday. Yeah, but still, dude, it's not that expensive. Um, so it's not horrible. Um, the the meal I like called the Plateau Del Mar. Right. Okay. Twenty five ninety five, wasn't it? No. Oh, try like thirty six bucks. Okay, so the the fish that I had was twenty nine ninety nine. Okay, okay. So, so yeah, the Plateau del Mar is a fajita plate. I think it's like a half pound of fajitas or something like that. And it had the brochet shrimp, four oh. pieces of brochet shrimp, and it's. Yeah, so good. See, that's it. Next year <laughs> for your birthday, that's what we're going to have. Both of us. Okay. On me. So, d- dude, if you want to be living with you and paying less Whatever. rent. Well... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he made that joke last night, folks. Yeah, he kept telling Jay he's going to have to give up the studio because he's moving in yep. with me. Jay was uh, like, uh, I don't know, man. Your couch looks really comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, you can have the couch. You wouldn't even ask for like, no, you're having the couch. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, what the hell? It was <laughs> funny as hell. So, but see, you know, I, the problem is I will spend that kind of money on myself, but I, I feel weird about letting other people spend that kind of money. So, like, I went on a date one time. And they had this 
two person meal and it had the shrimp it had the beef fajitas and it had the rib oh my god for 60 bucks yeah those ribs did look good yes they did so but if you think about that for 60 bucks it included the drinks i mean it was a full you know two person platter meal thing right. and oh my god it was so right. I know I know some people don't like Papacitos, but man, Papacitos is my like number one restaurant. You know, I, they got good food. They yeah. got excellent food. Yeah, salsa, chips, and dip. All of it's good. No, oh, the queso. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yep. Nick it's didn't just... have any of the queso. No, I didn't. Yeah, I was cheesed out. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't easy being cheesy, see- man. I, wanted see- I know, right? I wanted. <laughs> I wanted seafood. I wanted, you know. I know. I know. I wanted I wanted that seafood and I wanted some barracho beans. Yeah. So Yeah. So okay, I I got to I got to say this cuz you kind of caught me off guard last night. You really did. I I was very surprised. So of course, I'm I'm giving Nick a hard time because he bought dinner for you know, everyone. And so. I'm going to tell that story here in a minute just to make you understand how Simple it was. Go ahead. I know. Well, that's what I was, that was what surprised me because, you know, so of course my parents were upset. They were like, no, 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 we're buying. And I'm like, mom. Your mother didn't play. She looked right at me and she went, uh, I don't think so. No, sir. <laughs> Just like that. And I'm like, <laughs> I, know. I thought she was going to step up to the table. And give a, I know. A little she, stern talking she, to you. She gave you the mom look, didn't she? She did. <laughs> I know. And I just kind of had to look at her like, Mom, it's okay. You know, he can. And she calmed down, and it was just like, but yeah, I know. I saw the look. I was like, crap. (laughs) So, see, here was the deal with that. Yeah. You finished? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was going to let you continue. So, here's the deal with that. I I had this place in Bandera, and the way the market's going right now, it's a seller's market. So, I sold my place in Bandera for a lot more than I paid for it. Right. So I just got all that, and I hadn't had a chance to celebrate that fact. Well, when Jay invited me for his birthday dinner with his family, I'm like, here we go. So I did. I ordered the, the food that I wanted. Yeah. And I said, no, I'm I'm paying for the meal, because at this, t- at this moment right now, I can. Right. So we got the bill. Now there's six people at the table. We all had a meal. We all had teas and sodas and water, and your dad had a lemonade or two, and yeah. so all that. The bill was a hundred and eight dollars. Really? And I was, yeah, it's one hundred eight bucks for everybody's food, everybody's drinks, everything. Of course, there was no alcohol involved. Right. 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 That's where the thing that shocks the hell out of Jay, because I went on a date. To Papacitos, and it was just me and her. We sat at the bar. We got an appetizer. I had three or four beers. She had five Bloody Marys, and then we had two meals together, right. and it was $189 because of the alcohol. <sighs> yeah, and this is the shocking like, part. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I can't even go to Buffalo Wild Wings on a date for less than 100 bucks. <laughs> Because we're drinking alcohol. We're not doing shots and getting crazy, but you got to think about it. If you have three or four beers during dinner, they're five, six, seven bucks a piece. Right. And if they and have if a mixed drink, drink, they're like 10 drink, bucks. Seven, 10, yeah. Yeah. Seven, $15, depending on what they're doing. Right. Especially if they do a margarita or something. Oh, yeah. So, see. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was saying to Jay, and he just looked at me like. Like 187. He, what? Open. Yeah. He's like, I don't feel so bad now. I'm like, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> the alcohol put doubles the price. I know. I know. If everybody at that table would have had just one alcoholic beverage, that would have been a two hundred dollar tab. One hundred percent. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So I was like, just, I literally looked at the bill and like, I- I'll take care of this because it's only hundred bucks. <laughs> I know. You know. I know. <laughs> I was expecting it to be two hundred. Oh, I was too. I'm surprised it was only a hundred. Now I got to tell you. The, the next step of that story, and you'll understand why $100 ain't nothing when it comes to this. 
My dad wanted to have all his kids at a dinner table. Yeah. But he's getting up in age and he's starting to worry, but I want to spend a nice dinner. So I went to a place in Galveston, really nice place. Yeah. Okay. We had appetizers. All of us were drinking except for one person, alcoholic beverages. We had appetizers. We had a full meal. We had desserts. We had coffee alcoholic drinks after that. Right. There were six people at the table. And when the tab came out, it was $794. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah. And my brother tipped him 300 bucks. Oh, my goodness. Really? Yeah. It was over a $1,000 tab. Damn. Okay. We were, we were one of the first ones there when the restaurant opened at like six. Yeah. We were the last ones to walk out the door. And it was the middle of the week. Nice. And I'm going to tell you what, everything on that menu was to die for. Right. You're talking about a steak was 50 bucks. Right. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, it, it would be like whenever I used to take a date to, like, Pace, Texas for their birthday or something. Right. You know, the steaks are 36 for the cheapest one, I think, is what it is. Right. Yeah, 49 for the uh, the whatever you call it. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty yeah, insane. Yeah. But... Oh. We got to do that every now and then. We, we des- as hard as we work in life, everybody deserves it. deserves to say, hey, this one time I'm going to go splurge, you know? Yes. Because and, you, and I'm going to, uh, sorry to interrupt, but you lived another year. Uh, you have right. that right to celebrate and treat yourself. Yes, exactly. No matter how much it costs, yes, you're going to struggle a little bit. You might be eating ramen noodles for the next two weeks, but damn, it was so worth it. <laughs> so worth it. No, it is. It is. I think for me saying that, that's why I'm like, you need to go get the Plata del Mar thing, whatever you call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plato del Mar. There you have it. Yeah. So next year, if we don't have dinner with your with your mom and dad again, okay. You just you and I and the kids will go. Okay. I'll bring my son, you bring your kids, and we'll tell them they can have chips and salsa and an iced tea, and we'll get the plateau. Del Mar, yeah, there you go, exactly. <laughs> They're going to be eating from the kids' menu. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, but, we sir, he's 25. Chicken strip, yeah, and they're going to split it between the four of them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, but, no, I mean, it, you know. It, you make a good point. You, you do. And people really, it's, you know, I know it's hard. Birthdays can be hard sometimes. But really, thanks. Get another year. Yeah. You really yes. do. You get another a year to maybe experience another fun event. A year to do, you know, something. You, you may have another year that your smile is going to touch someone's heart. You just never know. Or a year you might save a life. Exactly. That's true. You just, it just, you gotta. Yeah. I mean, you, you, we, we have to take time for ourselves a certain amount. Yes. Most people don't do that. Self care. Caregivers and, and being fathers and being mothers and parents and, you know, yeah. Whatever. Brothers, sisters, you know, and coworkers, whatever, whatever the case is. And we do lose sight of the fact yeah. that, we really need to, you know, step up for ourselves. Yeah. So next week, folks, make sure you tune in. We're going to talk about self-care. Yes. Which That's is an my, important topic that yes, most people very, forget. Jay so. and I have been TikToking the hell out of self-care. Yes. Yes. I have a lot of self-care stuff on there. There's this psychologist named Sven. I absolutely love that man. Absolutely love him. I can't wait to tell one of the stories that I heard last week about how you deal with a breakup or, you know, how you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shocked me. Absolutely just floored, shocked me. Right, right. Well, and, you know, it's funny. You, you talk about that. I saw one, too. It's very similar. I don't remember if it was Finn or not. Finn. But, yeah. Well, let, let's pick that up next week. We're going to have a lot of fun. Um, oh, absolutely. You know, I love talking about that. Yes, exactly. 
So, but self care is very important. So, folks, stick around next week. We'll talk about self care. Um, we're gonna wrap this one up. I know we could go on, but you know, we'll we'll, we'll pick yep. up next week where we left off on the self care. Yep. So, any last minute comments you want to share with the crowd? I absolutely do. I want to tell everybody, have a happy birthday. Really, make your birthday a good one. Take care of yourself. Tell your spouse. I really want this to be my day, but I want everybody, my kids and family, I want them all to be involved. Whether you can't do it on your birthday, but the week before the week after, take the time to enjoy your birthday. I'm going to be, I'm celebrating the second anniversary of my 30th birthday next year. (laughs) I know. I'm going to do something fun. Good. Good. I am going to do something fun. Yeah. So we'll try to. Maybe we'll throw together something to, you know. We'll... A big old steak on the Traeger doesn't sound like a bad idea to me. No, but we could bring some people around, you know. I could bring the Traeger, and we could all gather at your mom's place or something. Ooh, see? There you go. See? <laughs> oh, see, now my wheels are spinning. I better write this stuff down, because I'll forget. I know. I know. So, But, you know, that would be a lot of fun if Joey came down, some of those other guys, you know, you would have a great. I mean, come on. It's your six He's working close to Texas. He's going to be working close to Texas by then. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so he's not going to be as far away. He's not in Florida. He won't be in Florida by then, hopefully. You know if, what? If yeah. No no excuses. Dude, it's your 60th. Oh, you only, yeah. he'll, you only, you only turned 60 once. He turned 60 this year. Oh, what the hell? Okay. Yeah, he's a year he's like a year old and his birthday is 5 days 5 days after mine. Okay. Okay. So yeah, he just turned sixty, and I'll turn sixty next year. Okay, well that's good. So, uh, but yeah, we should we, we'll do something fun. So, but I agree with Nick. Get out there, do something, be creative. You know, like I did. You know, we didn't we didn't really have the money to pay for everyone to go axe throwing. You know what? I built a wall, and you know what? The kids played for like three hours. There was no yeah. way I was going to be able to afford that. Right. You know, but what a great idea! What a way to get creative! Now you have it all the time. Exactly. So when it starts cooling off, you know where the kids are going to be, tearing that wall to pieces. I know, I know. That's all right. That's what it's for. Family comes over. You know, they're already talking about. Hey, I want to throw the knives too. You know. So. All right. Bring a steak with you. I know, right? <laughs> exactly. Good call. I'll be bringing a hot dog and hamburgers. Come over, you're going to throw knives, bring a steak with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got to be a ribeye, folks. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Go ahead and season it, season it the night before. Yeah, yeah. And we'll throw it on the trigger. And ribeyes are on sale right now at HB, by the way. So. <laughs> right. I'm going to stop at HB tomorrow. <laughs> I don't have a trigger, so. <laughs> but I actually, no, no, no. The reason I said they're on sale is I think I was, I got, it's three ribeyes. 17 bucks. Wow. Yeah. They are on sale. Yeah, they are on sale. Yeah, yeah. dude. So I bought six, six ribeyes, you know, for what, you know, 35, 36 bucks tops. Right. Yeah. And so I packaged each one separately. So when the kids are out doing whatever, the Gabe's with his mom and Jay's with his friends, I can slap my little ribeye on the grill and just enjoy a nice little steak. There you so, go. See, uh, so you're doing it. Yeah. Steak and eggs, folks. Oh. Yeah, see? <laughs> chili and eggs. Oh. Uh, chili and eggs is good, too. Yeah, because I used to make, with the kids, I would make four or five pounds of hamburger meat chili. Yeah. In a big old pot. Yeah. And then, so we'd have plenty left over sometimes. Sometimes the boys weren't hungry. Yes. And the next morning, I would, you know, scramble up some eggs and heat the chili up. And, yeah, man, that's good stuff. Oh, that is good. I'm ready for a nap now, all that food we're talking about. I know, exactly. So, but yeah, going back to where we were, well, before we got off topic here, um, yeah, celebrate your birthdays. Yeah, got to do it. Yeah. We are thankful you are here another year. So you yes. should be thankful you are here another year. You yep. know? So um, I don't have anything else. I love you, man. Love you, brother. Got lots. Of- Lots of love going on today, man. It was a good day. It was. It was. Yeah. So, um, and folks, you know, we always 
course, love you. Um, keep following, keep listening.